we had already discussed few things again we will recall that a stochastic convergence with few more example and we will see application of a stochastic convergence in central limit theorem and law of large number actually law of large number and central limit theorem those are just a specific case of a stochastic convergence so that we will see it here so coming to outline of today's lecture uh, first i would like to discuss about uh, a stochastic convergence uh, and uh, various example we will perform it here like uh, simply we will have in place of sequence we will have a stochastic sequence that means sequence of random variable we will have and we will talk about convergence of the sequence in three different approach so where so this sequence of random variable it will converge to some random variable so in which manner it it will converge that we will see it here there are three different approach one approach i had already mentioned that it converges to x in probability another one it converges to x in distribution then there was one more convergence it converges to x in almost sure way so what is happening that uh, so all these are different kind of notion of convergence of sequence of random variable and various uh, requirement are there for this one so if you talk about uh, 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 which one among these three different type of convergence which one is the uh, strongest one and with, with which one is the weakest one so you can easily see that uh, almost uh, uh, sure convergence uh, it is the uh, strongest one it implies probability in convergence Uh, protein convergence implies uh, convergence in distri distribution convergence in probability implies convergence in distribution so convergence in distribution is the more general convergence notion of convergence or or what we call it weaker version of convergence and we will see one a special case there uh, convergence in distribution implies uh, convergence in probability that one that that would be one exception so so all those things we will see in a stochastic convergence after that we will go to discuss about law of large numbers so law of large number is basically just it is talking about that uh, here we if you are having a random sample that means if you are having n measurement of uh, a random variable whose distribution is unknown to us we don't know what would be distribution of that and if you don't know distribution then we can't compute mean so what is happening that so given a, suppose this one is the random sample of that uh, random variable and then using this random sample we can define a sample mean so sample mean it happens to be an, an estimate it is giving an estimate it is an estimator of the uh, true mean okay true mean it, it would be what expectation of x but in order to compute true mean you need to know distribution of x and you don't know distribution of x this one is unknown to us okay so simply it is not possible to compute uh, expectation so what you in order to uh, compute expectation we, uh, we don't need to compute it so what we go uh, what we do we try to come up with sample mean and we know sample mean is having a distribution that distribution we are calling it sampling distribution and in central limit we will we will see that this sample mean is having approximated normal distribution that we will see that so from this given random sample it is a random sample of size n from here we can define a sample mean so it is in our hand from the given sample we are defining this one so we are claiming in last sample that uh, when sample size is going to definitely it is a random variable so you can put here suffix as well because n is the sample size it will grow as uh, you are keep on taking increasing the sample size so that's why n suffix in suffix we are putting it so simply you treat it this one is a random variable okay and this random variable we are claiming that it will converge to true value of the expectation of random variable it will converge to here okay so it uh, the convergence is happening in which way it is happening in uh, convergence in probability approach so this one is the weak law of large number there would be also a strong law of large number that means convergence there that time it would talk about almost sure convergence that would be a strong law of large number but here you will see that derivation of weak law of large number is very simple but if you talk about derivation of uh, a strong law of large number that might be little bit complicated and after that if time permit then we will discuss about central limit theorem so this one is what central limit theorem here uh, you know that uh, all these everywhere we will have we will start with a, a sample 
so, random sample of size n so this one is random sample of size n so again we got this sample mean this is the sample mean so here what is happening that this sample mean is what uh, here simply if you are willing to compute uh, mean of sample mean we had already seen in last class a mean of sample mean happens to be equal to uh, true mean that means expectation of uh, uh, x that uh, whose distribution is unknown to us and variance also simply we denote it by mu true mean we denote or population mean also we can call it we denote it by mu okay call it mu so mu and likewise also you are willing to compute variance of sample mean then we had already seen that variance of sample mean was x bar n okay it was sigma square by n but here sigma square is not known to us it is right now because we don't know the distribution here just we know that sigma square is the notion of population variance or true variance of the uh, random variable true variance what we call it here sigma square so that we had already uh, seen that okay and we are having notion of uh, this uh, sample mean so what is happening that uh, in normal distribution we had already seen that uh, uh, if you are having a normal distribution then uh, from there we can always get a standard normal distribution and that one is having very simple notation in sense that mean of a standard normal distribution would be zero and variance would be one so that's way uh, that normal distribution a standard normal distribution we got it from a striation of the normal distribution and it is having mean zero and variance one so it is having very a specific notation and simple notation similar feature we will see it here in case of uh, a sample mean then we can define a asterisk sample mean how we define asterisk sample mean in the same scenario what we had already seen asterisk of a random variable so how we do asterisk of a random variable so first we deviate here x bar the sample mean happens to be a random variable so we deviate it by the mean of the random variable uh, that uh, mean of x bar that sample mean and what is the mean mean is the mu true mean or you can write it uh, expectation of x but uh, just to for simplicity we are writing it mu and we are dividing it by the standard deviation of the sample mean what does that that one is the uh, uh, it is a square root of the variance of sample mean so it would be sigma by uh, a square root of n it would be sigma by a square root of n so this zn we can call it it is uh, uh, we are call, we got it by deviating uh, and by asterizing the sample mean so we can say it it asterize sample mean it is asterize sample mean because we are getting it by asterization of the sample mean so you can say that it is asterize sample mean okay so what is the beauty of this one so if you are willing to compute the mean and variance of this asterisk sample mean then you will see that it is having the same mean and variance of a standard normal distribution so that's why we we are computing doing asterisk of the sample mean so if you compute expectation of this this uh, asterisk sample mean zn okay it would be equal to 0 and variance would be equal to 1 you can verify all the, these computation are very simple algebraic manipulation you can easily you can find variance would be equal to one and in central limit theorem what does it say it say that distribution of this uh, zn central uh, distribution of zn this centralized uh, sample mean it is converging in distribution converging in distribution to where to distribution of a standard normal random variable a standard normal so that is the concept we will see it in central limit theorem convergence in distribution so that's why always we say that when we are defining sample mean then sample uh, and then corresponding asterisk sample mean will have uh, approximately a standard normal distribution and hence also we can claim that the sample mean will have approximate normal distribution so irrespective of the nature of uh, x so x may be any kind of random variable don't worry about but if you are defining sample mean 
or standardization for mean then you will see that you are just trying to approximate normal distribution so that's why you don't have to worry about normal distribution is playing very important role to compute approximate distribution so okay so when sample size happens to be uh, very large when n is approaching to infinity this sample size happens to be very large that time we see such kind of uh, scenario and we will also talk about what is the threshold value of n after which if you take we are taking sample size greater than that threshold value and hence we can talk about approximation of as any distribution by normal distribution that threshold value would be 32 so after when threshold value is greater than or equal to 32 we can talk about the sample mean irrespective of nature of uh, random variable x this sample mean would be approximately normal and the corresponding assigned sample mean would be uh, approximately assigned a normal random variable so that you can talk about okay so all these are overview of today's lecture what we are going to discuss so coming to first part that uh, uh, a stochastic convergence of uh, uh, sequence of random variable so various notion, notion we had already established and we have already mentioned that again i am recalling it so if suppose you are having a sequence of random variable x1 x2 up to uh, it will go uh, up to infinity it depends upon that so suppose simply we are having a sequence of random variable then we say that it is converging to edit x in distribution convergence in distribution or in notation we denote it that action is converging to x in distribution here in, uh, above arrow we are putting d so convergence in distribution simply you can read it okay so we say that it is convergence in distribution if the sequential distribution is converging to limiting value of sequential distribution is equal to distribution of x when n is approaching to infinity then we will say that the sequence is converging to x in distribution likewise also we can define convergence in probability how we define in like this way that means uh, simply we say that uh, if you are having a sequence then what is happening that this sequence will converge to x uh, x okay in probability if uh, limiting value of uh, this uh, probability that uh, x and it within epsilon distance of x is equal to 1 the limiting value of probability that x is within epsilon distance of x so, so geometrically you can see it like this way so remember that here n is the sample size that when n is uh, uh, right now talk about any sequence in sense so x would be here like this way so uh, xn is within epsilon distance within epsilon distance of this one is the positive epsilon this one is the negative epsilon so what is the probability uh, when n is very large so you can say that it is with high probability or this n tends to infinity also you can say, say that uh, with high probability the random variable is within epsilon distance uh, the uh, sequence uh, the sequence of random variable within is within epsilon distance of x so that you can say that with high probability you can say that uh, equivalently you can say that with very low probability that uh, sequence of random variable uh, is epsilon away from zero when you are taking limiting n tends to infinity then it, it becomes zero but if you try to convert in the epsilon n concept then you can say that uh, with uh, very low probability this uh, xn uh, is away from epsilon epsilon away from uh, x so that you can say that this one is with high probability this one is with low probability that concept is coming simply here like that way okay now here there is one more convergence that we are talking about con almost sure convergence to x in the similar fashion what is happening that uh, here just limit will go inside the probability so what is the probability that uh, limit of this sequence is equal to one uh, it is equal to o. Uh, this limit of the sequence equal to x with probability one it is limiting value uh, equal to zero okay with probability one that we say that and uh, equivalent form we are saying like this way so it is little bit less popular but uh, these two are very much popular what we call it and these are also very simple to understand uh, okay so here uh, further if you try to see more uh, 
concrete way then we can say that uh, this notion of convergence is the strongest word and it implies the convergence of property and this one implies convergence in distribution and there is one exception that if you are taking a convergence in distribution to a constant then it will imply that convergence in distribution probability to constant so this one is the exception just otherwise uh, simply uh, you may already remember that p implies q uh, if you try to see from the set theory perspective simply see that uh, here p is more it is what we call it uh, p is containing yes, q is containing p simply it say that uh, q is bigger than p this one is q and this one is p so p is inside q if uh, uh, so if uh, what is happening that uh, if q is true by default p have to be true why because p is inside q but uh, sometimes it may also happen that uh, p might be true and uh, here uh, that means uh, here simply p might be false and q might be true due to this outer world here okay that situation also uh, may possible okay so uh, q might be implied from outside q p we don't have to focus on p so this uh, the q containing many things so by default uh, p is uh, in here we can see that p is inside q simply i would like to say that so uh, p is true then it implies definitely it is within q so q is true uh, uh, it implies that simply simply say that q is true then it implies by default p have to be true so q is the more general sense i would like to say that and there are many consequences contra one contradiction you can say it like this way that uh, when this one is false when this one is false anyone would like to hi highlight when it would be false it is just an implication one time i might have already seen that uh, I, I might have already described that when it is uh, uh, false Tell me when this implication is false. Anyone would like to highlight? It is just a logic. It is very simple. P is inside Q. So when it would be false? You say that Q is false and P is true. Is it possible? P is inside Q. And definitely you will say that uh, P is true and Q is false. That one is not possible. That uh, that would lead to false result. So it is somewhat logically equivalent to uh, P implies not Q. Something like that. I have to say that uh, uh, something that it would come. Okay. Uh, uh, that we have to see. Okay. See, it is logically equivalent. To, logical equivalent, you need to find. Just a, as a, uh, one time I had already described that. Just find it uh, that uh, when this would be uh, false. When this would be false, then you will see all these implications are also having very uh, uh, interesting meaning. Okay. Let us come to that uh, uh, one exception case that convergence in distribution to a constant implies convergence to probability. Convergence in probability. So if you are taking a uh, simply take a, a sequence of random variable whose uh, which are Gaussian in nature and having mean zero and variance having one by n squared. So this kind of variance is having. Okay, so we will see it. It is having direct delta representation that we will see it here. So if you uh, are willing to establish convergence in distribution, then it will converge to zero random variable. Zero random variable. That that a random variable which is taking observing value zero everywhere and in distribution. Can you can you anyone suggest that? Do you know any random variable which is zero everywhere? Any idea? Zero almost everywhere. Do you know any distribution person? Uh, do you know any random variable uh, which is having uh, value zero everywhere? But uh, if it is zero everywhere, then how we can come up with distribution person? What would be distribution function of that? Anyone may give idea? You all are from EC background. You all deal with signal and as, uh, other kind of things, a lot of signal. So do you know any distribution function we, uh, that represents that one is zero everywhere, uh, but 
it is a distribution function anyone do you know such kind of distribution function do you know or not just say yes or no anyone try to answer it if you know then try to answer it and if you don't know just say i don't know do you know any distribution function which is zero everywhere but it is a distribution function almost everywhere zero okay. anyone suraj do you know it and anyone just try to answer it don't know it is really very simple example you people should know and if you are unable to answer answer then what is meaning of that that person got nobel prize for that function that distribution you people don't understand that what is meaning of that nobel prize the direct delta function you might be aware of that direct delta function what does it represent how we define it and i might have already explained it so direct delta function it is taking value of it is zero everywhere except one point so so you can define it like this way it is a zero when x is not equal to zero and it is very big i am just writing it very big uh, capital m when x is not equal to zero very big this you can write it infinity but that infinity is not a number so that's why i am not writing simply m you can say that it is very big so it defined in two part one part is this one another part it say that uh, it is defined in such a way if you integrate the function it is zero everywhere except at a point and if you integrate this direct delta function over the uh, real number for all real number then integral would be equal to 1 that one, that one is the normalizing condition of a distribution function or probability density function or probability mass the probability density function so you know that this one is the direct delta function so similar feature this zero is not uh, just uh, uh, zero uh, constant zero it is talking about uh, uh, a random variable whose distribution is the direct delta function distribution function is the direct delta function that i would like to say that so if you are taking this kind of uh, uh, distribution that gaussian distribution with uh, variance 1 by n square and zero mean then that one is converging to direct delta function that uh, distribution is also in uh, convergence in distribution simply i would like to say that so we can talk about like this way so here uh, easily we can say that it is normal distribution with this one so easily you can come up with uh, explicit expression of uh, distribution function of x n and that would be like this way and you just take limit n tends to infinity because now everything is open to you so you can take limit n tends to infinity and so here we know that limit is uh, what uh, interchangeable with integration so you can take limit inside the integral so if you are taking limit inside the integral what does it represent if you try to see what would be this again don't know i had explain everything here again you people are unable to answer it would be just direct delta function it is the direct delta function d of x if you just take limiting value this one another definition of what we call it uh, direct delta function in the limiting fashion what we call it so it is just limit of this one direct delta function and if you integrate a direct delta function up to x what is the integration of direct delta function it is the unit step function and if you differentiate a unit step function then you will get direct delta function so in signal system all these are very much essential you should know all those things so what is the unit step function it is if no sub uh, suffix is mentioned here by default you it is just uh, you are taking with respect to origin that means when you are taking value x greater than or equal to 0 u of x is 1 and when x is less than 0 u of x is 0 so this is the uh, what we call it unit step function in control theory also you need to know all those those things will come this one this one is the unit step function which happens to be integral of the direct delta function it is taking value 1 when x is greater than or equal to 
when x is less than uh, zero, then unit of step function would be zero. It is equal to zero. Okay, so you can easily see that uh, the limiting value of distribution of uh, this uh, x n it happens to be uh, f zero of x unit of step function that we say that uh, it is the uh, distribution function of zero random variable zero simply uh, x would be not zero everywhere because otherwise how you can de define distribution function it, it is very difficult to define that means x zero random, random variable means simply we say that it is a random variable with direct delta distribution distribution function would be direct delta that is the meaning of this okay so we had already seen that if you are taking this kind of sequence of random variable that would converge to zero the direct delta random variable also you can say that which distribution happens to be direct delta function and then here simply this will imply the convergence of two uh, convergence in probability easily we can see that here here we can generalize so this one is one result i established that convergence of this x and two uh, direct delta random variable you can call it here like this way so we try to take it here sequence of uh, uh, random variable which is Gaussian in nature but here mean is non-zero mean is C so okay what will happen so same explanation will come and through that we can claim that uh, action will converge to C okay and in distribution then what would be the distribution of C so it is constant everywhere except point C this one is constant ever everywhere except point c at point c this one is observing uh, this random variable observing very big value in sense to get a meaningful distribution so again this c is having a direct delta distribution uh, what centered at c we see see that uh, delta c of x so what does it mean that means it is zero when x is not equal to c and when x equal to c, it is take observing very big value. In sense that if you integrate this direct delta function, then integral would be equal to one. So that observation we say that. And through same this explanation, we can see that uh, this uh, limiting value of this sequence or distribution of sequence, this sequence random variable, it will converge to uh, our limiting value would be u c x that unit of state. Uh, step function centered at c that means what does it say it say that uh, suppose c would be here so uh, after c this function is observing value 1 and before c this function is observing value 0 observing value 0 so that is that it is centered about c this this is again unit of step function so just uh, here what is just uh, uh, we take here a mean was zero here mean is c so that was so derivation is almost same so here we will talk about uh, that uh, conversion in distribution it will imply convergence in probability so that we are going to establish here we will see it here so here simply we are claiming that if uh, we are having, having sequence of random variable which is normal in nature with mean c and uh, variance one by n square then we can easily claim that action is convergent to C in distribution and further it will imply action is convergent in probability to C. So this implication easily we can see it like this way. So what is happening that we had already seen that uh, uh, this re relation we had already this convergence we had already seen that. So it is implying that uh, uh, what is happening that if you take uh, X and uh, that limiting of this probability that means uh, what is the probability that uh, uh, xn is epsilon away from c uh, when sample size is very large a sample sample size is approaching to infinity that uh, that would be zero okay so how we can see it we can see it like this way we know that uh, that uh, probability that uh, this the xn is epsilon away from c it can be written like this way by breaking it uh, uh, right tail probability and left tail probability okay so geometrically you know that how you, it look so here c would be here then this region we will call it uh, x and right tail that x n is greater than uh, c epsilon greater
Okay. If silent plus c or x minus c, better call it x minus c greater than epsilon. So we have to handle the x minus c greater than epsilon and this region here this one is the c plus epsilon. This one is C minus epsilon. Okay, so this region we will call it Xn minus C less than minus epsilon. Okay, so just we try to see this perspective, or you can simplify C, you can take it uh, right hand side here also. C, you can take it right hand side. So, same scenario, you will see, you will see it. So, just uh, if you focus over this one. What does it talk about in term of distribution? You can write it one minus uh, distribution function of x n at c plus epsilon. Likewise, this one is automatically defined distribution function at c minus epsilon. So we are writing it like this way. So if you focus on uh, nature of this one, what does it talk about? So if, so if you take limit n tends to infinity, where does it converge? If you take limit n tends to infinity, Sample, where sample size is approaching to infinity that means sample is approaching to population so in that case it would be what it would be direct delta function centered at c uh, uh, sorry is that uh, integral of direct delta function that we have that happens to be unit of step function centered at c uh, and we are trying to compute it at c plus epsilon and this would be also direct delta integral of direct delta function that would be unit of step function centered at c i am taking value uh, at c minus epsilon so we observe that we know that it is unit a step functions uh, centered at c that means it is observing value uh, one up to on and onward c and before c it is observing value zero so easily we can say that a c plus epsilon it would be right of c so that's where value of this one would be one and c minus epsilon it would be left of c so value at uh, of this one it would be uh, zero so if you simplify then value is total value is coming zero. So simply we can say that uh, limiting value of this probability, this probability, tail, uh, tail probability simply you can say limiting value of this, of this tail probability, it would be equal to zero when sample size is approaching to the, uh, infinity. And hence we just proved that uh, this one, it is talking about this, uh, this convergence is talking about this one. It is what? It is convergence in probability. So we have already seen that all. So further, Algebra, we can see the various results regarding convergence in probability through algebraic approach. What are those? So algebra, simply we say that uh, with respect convergence, with respect to plus uh, subtraction, then multiplication, those kind of things. So if you are taking two sequence of random variable, uh, which are x and y n, suppose x n is converging to x in probability, y n is converging to x, y in probability, then if you sum these two sequence of random variable, then sum of sequence would converge to corresponding limit, okay, in probability. Also product would converge to product of corresponding limit in probability, okay, so this convergence. Also here, uh, if you are taking a continuous function, under the, that continuous map, the corresponding functional sequence will converge to function of image of x. So that, that one also implied in convergence in probabilities. All these are simple algebra. Proof is very simple if you are willing to uh, uh, get proof of this one. So you can uh, use that proof like in math one, you might have already gone through a limit of uh, uh, that uh, algebra of limit, algebra of continuity. Uh, algebra of differentiality so so such kind of concept also you can apply it here uh, algebra of uh, sequence uh, uh, limit of sequence of ren uh, sequence limit of sequence algebra of, uh, of uh, convergency of uh, uh, series so so similar kind of concept here you can apply it here now but if you remember if you talk about convergence in distribution then this result would not hold okay uh, this result would not hold simply it, it would not hold this uh, uh, addition rule and multiplication rule it would not help okay so what is that what is there then but this rule would help that means if you are having a sequence of random variable which is converges to 
x in distribution and if you are taking a continuous function then under that continuous function that uh, convergence in distribution preserved there is no issue but if you talk about summation then sum with respect to summation it it, uh, it would be closed when uh, one of the sequence is convergent to constant so suppose xn is converged to x in distribution yn is converged to constant c in distribution then some of these two sequences would converge to x plus c in distribution any do you have any question jaya jaya just you just switch off your microphone Switch up your microphone. So I was talking about uh, this uh, algebra for uh, convergence in distributions. So all these are results. If you are interested uh, in more deeper results, you can go for that. So just uh, I will take few example. After that, just uh, I would like to wind up this lecture. So I will uh, talk about example on convergence in probability. So this result is also very simple. So if you are taking a sequence of random variable uh, where each member is exponentially, distri uh, exponentially distributed with uh, uh, parameter n. Okay, this is the parameter n. Lambda equal to n is given to us. So we can claim that uh, this sequence of random variable it is converging to zero in probability. So it is converging to zero in probability. Okay, that we are talking about. So how we can uh, establish this result? So it is very simple to establish this result. Just uh, again, uh, we, uh, here what we do? Uh, we try to focus on uh, that uh, probability of uh, action, which is epsilon away from zero. Epsilon away from zero. So uh, here, uh, modulus of action minus zero, it would be just action. So same simplification. And, and here we are taking exponential random variable, which is always greater than or equal to zero. So modulus of action just is, it becomes action. Okay. So we are, um, what does it becomes? It is talking about uh, uh, probability of action greater than or equal to uh, epsilon. So uh, here, if you are trying to find probability uh, of uh, this uh, term in term of exponential, I had already uh, mentioned that uh, probability of right tail, it is very easy to find because it is having just right tail. This exponential is having right tail. So for if x is any ex exponential random variable, then probability of x right tail, it would be just equal to in term of exponential. It, in term of exponential, you can easily express that. Okay, so due to that, what will happen? So that same concept we had written like this way. So it is coming like this. So if you take limit n tends to infinity, what does it becomes? It is just when n is approached to infinity, this quantity will converge to zero. So here we had already seen that uh, that uh, what is the limiting value of this probability when n is approaching to infinity? Limit so uh, that is this uh, x n is epsilon away from zero. That probability uh, that limit value is zero and hence we it simply implies that action must be within epsilon distance of zero within epsilon distance of zero when sample size goes to infinity or when n goes to infinity okay so so with probability one one minus zero is one so that's with probability one with high probability it, it is simply you can set within epsilon distance of zero what i would like to say so this convergence is, is talking about convergence in um, probability and another there is one more result you can see it all these are here we are taking a random variable x it is x is any random variable and yn is very specific random variable whose mean is 1 by n and variance is sigma square by n okay so if you define a sequence of random variable xn equal to x plus yn then easily we can say that xn is converging to x in probability so that that result is also followed directly through this uh, uh, this uh, compute this one and you keep on uh, computing this uh, you come here and here you apply uh, that uh, Chebyshev infinity Chebyshev infinity uh, just apply uh, this is the 
uh, t actual t what we had already defined so with respect you can call it t so what is the probability that uh, uh, modulus of that uh, modulus of the centered random variable is uh, greater than or equal to t it would be bounded above by variance of this uh, this one okay variance of this uh, variance simply it would be expectation of uh, uh, a square of this one so that becomes variance of y n divided by t square in plus of t square we have to put epsilon minus 1 by n square and you, when you take a limiting value of this one uh, when n tends to infinity it will approach to 0 it will approach to 0 so that concept will come here so all this Computation is very simple. Is simply you can compute. So uh, there is one example of convergence in almost everywhere. So just uh, if you take a sequence of random variable which is having a distribution like this way, this is the distribution of sequence of random variable. Each action is having like distribution like this way. So what is happening that how you can establish convergence in almost your way? So again find uh, this. Uh, uh, there is one more result also you can apply it, this result it say that if you are having sequence of random variable uh, okay then for every epsilon uh, this sum it would be uh, if it, this sum is bounded uh, it is a finite number it is bounded or finite number then it implies convergence in almost sure way so what is what is happening that in order to establish convergence almost uh, convergence in almost sure way of this sequence of random variable just find this uh, sum and try to establish that whether this sum is a finite number or not that means it is a finite number less than infinity means finite number of not so same concept we have to come up with this one and we will see that this sum is actually a finite number it is talking about uh, this floor for function 1 by n okay so definitely it is a finite number and hence we can easily see that uh, this sequence is conversion in almost sure way to x okay